In this video, we're going to look at creating slope graphs using Excel. Now, slope graphs were first introduced by Edward Tufte in his book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, back in 1983, where he referred to them as table graphics. The more catchy term, slope graphs, came much later. Now, slope graphs are useful for comparing change over time. For example, the slope graph here shows the change in long-term health conditions from 2001 through to 2014-2015 for Australia. Now, I've messed with the data a little for this example, so don't go making any business decisions based on this chart. Now, fortunately, slope graphs are very similar to a line chart that has just two points for each line. Now, unfortunately, the labeling of these two points, which is one of the main attributes of a slope, a slope graph, is not so easy. I've found some ways to wrangle Excel to create slope graphs and a shortcut if you're happy with something that's almost a slope graph. So let's get started. I've got a blank sheet here just with my data. So the first thing we do is select the data down to the bottom of the main series. This series of numbers here in column C and rows 16 through 25 is just for our second set of value labels and we'll pick those up in a moment. But in order to get the chart laid out correctly when we insert it, we want to select just that part of the data and then insert an irregular 2D line chart. So here we, we need to right click on the chart and select data. We need to switch the row and column. So if I show you what happens when we switch row and column, now I have my lines that are a bit squished. I'll click OK and we'll delete the legend. Now we have a bit more room. Let's just make it a bit bigger. I want to delete these grid lines. So just left click on them, press delete. Likewise with the vertical axis, click on it and press delete. And now the fun begins, the labeling. So I'm recording this in Excel 2013. And if you're using Excel 2016, then this will be the same. But if you're using Excel 2007 or 2010, then you'll need to click on your chart. And then up in the chart tools, you'll have a tab for layout, I think it is. So up there, you'll find the chart elements. I'm going to click on the plus here. And I'm going to add data labels. I'm going to click on the arrow and go more options. So if you're using 2007 or 2010, you want to go to more options and that will open the dialog box, which will have similar settings to what you see here. So now that I've added my labels, you see the default is the value label on each end of the line or at each point. It just happens to be the end because I only have two points for each line and the very top labels are selected. So the changes I make now in these options over here will only be applied to the first two points and this is the annoying part because you actually have to repeat this for every point and you have to do it manually. So what we want to do is add the series name, deselect the leader lines, change the separator to a space as opposed to a comma and the reason we want to do this is you see with the separator as a comma the value wraps onto the next line. When you use a space you're able to actually make that label stretch across just one line. So there's no wrapping. I have to resize the boxes to do that, but we'll come to that in a moment. For now, I just want to add the series name, remove the leader lines, change the separator to a space and left align label. So you'll see they're both left aligned. And this one here is the one we actually want left aligned. And this one here we want right aligned. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to work through all the uh, labels on the left and then we'll come to the labels on the right. So back to my label options and in here I'm going to use my arrow keys. So at the moment my top labels are selected. If I use the up arrow it moves me down to the next set and I can just apply the same settings. We'll select the next one. Now you need to repeat this for each one. So I'm going to pause the video and quickly go through and make all these changes so that you don't have to watch me do it one by one because it got quite boring. Okay, so I've modified all of my labels so they now show the series name and the value. I'm just going to make my chart a bit wider and a little taller. 
So now the fun begins because we need to resize some of these labels that are wrapping and any that overlap. So when I left click on the labels, both are selected. If I left click once more, and it's not a double click, it's just two slow left clicks, I then have pull handles. And this is in 2013 and 2016. If you're using Excel 2010, then you don't have these pull handles that are available on the second left click. What you have to do is make your chart really, really wide and then select the plot area and make that a bit smaller so that your lines, oops, so that your lines aren't really, really wide. Okay, so you just need to mess about with it until you get it how you want. I'm going to undo that because that's for 2010 and in 2013 I have the luxury of the two left clicks and then the pull handles that allow me to make them wider. So basically you need to spend a bit of time resizing all of these boxes and the chart until you get it laid out the way you want. So I'll skip on to the ones that are overlapping each other and two left clicks and then I can hold down my shift key and I can move it and it will stay aligned to the right or left more easily. So that's the back problems and that's 21 and short sightedness is 20.8. So I want back problems above short sightedness and then we'll use the arrow keys to select the other one. There we go. So just move them so they're not sitting on top of each other. Don't worry about the right hand side at this point. You might need to move some of these so that they're closer to the line. And it's a big fiddly problem. You want to get some supplies because you'll get hungry. It will take you ages. So this is really a labor of love, this chart. It's not something you want to just quickly whip up. Okay, so you'll go through and do all of those changes to the left and make them all aligned nicely and then you want to go and modify the right and this is where the second series of values comes in. So at the moment the, val the labels on the left are a single label that contains the series name and the series value and so are the ones on the right. The problem is we want the order of the labels on the right to show number or value and then series name. If we look at the other one you can see it's the value and then the series name. And what you'll see is these are actually two separate labels. One on the right is the series name and then we have a separate one for the value. And these values come from this set of numbers here. And that's all because we can't change the order these are displayed in. So what we need to do is expand our series. So I've clicked in the plot area of the chart and I'm going to drag the blue marker down and now I have two sets of labels on the right. You can see I've got the value labels now and those ones I've just added. Plus I've got this label that contains the series and the value. So I'm going to left click on the series on the right or the label on the right and I'm going to modify that to remove the value and then I'm going to right align it. And you'll see it's overlapped the value and I just need to hold down the shift key and drag it across to the right so that it's not sitting on top of the number. And then you simply rinse and repeat. Oops. Remove the value and align right and then hold down shift, left click and drag it across. So you do this for each one. And if you've got lots and lots of lines, it could take you a while. Basically, that's how you get the labeling in a slope graph to lay out the correct way in Excel. It's a bit of a hack of a line chart with a dummy series of labels or values for the right hand value labels. So the next thing you want to do is make sure that your chart colors are not making it look like a pile of pickup sticks. So perhaps pick something more neutral, maybe shades of gray or blue. And if you want to, you can highlight one or two points, although the degree of the line should draw the reader's eye to those particular points, but you can add some emphasis, just don't go crazy with the colors. Now, if you'd prefer something that is a bit less labor intensive, 
then you could leave your points so or your labels on the right so that they are displaying as the series name and then the value like this one here and then you don't need this extra set of data you can just simply select the right hand label and set it to the right although I think it's not as effective as having the value at the very ends of the lines and it is a bit of a, a shift from Tufty's original design for the slope graph but if you're pressed for time then that might be a suitable option for you. You'll also want to make the length of the line a bit shorter than what I have here so bear that in mind try and get the length of the line right before you mess about with all your formatting of your labels because Reducing the width of your chart will have an effect on where those labels are positioned. And now that I've reduced my plot area, it looks like my chart is not aligned to my chart area or my actual lines are not centered. So a simple way to avoid that appearance is just to remove the outline from the chart altogether and you can move the chart title over to the left or manually center it. And if we remove the grid lines from the page, now you can't tell that the chart isn't aligned in the chart area. Okay, so there's a way to create slope graphs in Excel. It's quite laborious, but they are very effective for showing the degree of change in data over time. So they're worth the effort in certain situations.